everyone thinks Canada is all happy, full with polite people, moose and maple syrup, and I'm here to tell you that yes, while that is true, we do have some ghosts though. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily, and today we are counting down our list of the top 10 haunted places in Toronto that are pure evil. So be prepared to get scared, eh? Get it? Because it's a Canadian city? Okay, well, let's just get on with the countdown. Number 10, Humber College Lakeshore Campus. Oh, Humber, my former college. Shout out to the Acting for Film and Television program and Television Writing and Producing programs. Now, if you've ever been to Humber, you know that the campus is haunted. The Lakeshore Psychiatric Hospital was in operation on what is now Humber College's Lakeshore grounds from 1890 to 1979. Now, there's been ghosts sighted there, and it's a nurse. She was apparently having an affair with a patient, and then for some reason she chose to hang herself on the apple tree in the orchard, Humber Business School professor Steve Bang said. In the cottage area of the college, specifically Building G is haunted. The nurse was spotted in many cases in G Building, which is where people used to see her through the windows at night until the windows were boarded up. And I will say, Building G always gave me the creeps. Also, there's there's tunnels underground connecting all the buildings, and it's said that's how nurses transfer patients around the grounds. Now, I remember when I first found the door to the tunnel, my friend Summer and I were so confused, as you can see here. Now, they also use the tunnels to film famous TV shows and movies like Suicide Squad, which is pretty cool. Also, I think my dorm my first year was haunted as I heard knocking coming from inside my closet, our lights flickered 24 7, and I always felt like someone. One was watching me. Number nine, Fairmont Royal York. Right across from Union Station, this hotel is full of history. Now, there are five main hauntings here. The first is in regards to the Fairmont Royal York's Crystal Ballroom, or should I say the former Crystal Ballroom. The Fairmont's Crystal Ballroom was closed down permanently because it violated a number of fire codes. However, since the closure of the ballroom, many people who have stayed in the rooms directly underneath say they hear noises such as music and talking coming from the floor above. Now it's also said that the elevator will sometimes take you up to the ballroom floor without anyone ever pushing the button. The second haunting is of a former banquet porter who was found hanging in the stairwell of the 19th floor, an area where the meeting rooms are held. Once in a while, staff report seeing the porter's upper body float around the 19th floor. The third haunting slash unexplained event is the sound of children laughing and running up and down the halls. Many guests have complained about children, but many also admit to opening their doors and seeing an empty hallway. Then there's a man on the 8th floor who roams around wearing a purple jacket. However, that is all that is known about this ghostly figure. And finally, there are stories that a very wealthy man visited the hotel with his new bride and himself and her now both lurk around the hotel at night. He mostly dwells in the stairwells, but the bride can be found in the room she stayed that night. Number 8. The Keg Mansion Now a restaurant this house once belonged to the Masseys. Lillian was the only daughter of Hart Massey, and she died in 1915 while living in today's Keg Mansion house. According to the legend, the tragedy of Lillian's maid happened just after her death. The maid was downstairs as a dying Lillian lay in her bed, and when the doctor announced that she had died, it said that the maid was witnessed walking out to the main hall, up the stairs to the oval vestibule, and she fashioned a noose, wrapping one end to the wood railing. She hoisted herself up and over the side. House guests found her swinging above the floor right near the grand staircase. Now most believe her death was due to grief, and over the years numerous guests and staff have allegedly seen the maid's body dangling over the stairs and then disappearing. Guests have also reportedly seen ghostly children playing throughout the restaurant, and the second floor washroom is said to be haunted as well. Number 7. Gibraltar Point Lighthouse Built in 1808, the Gibraltar Point Lighthouse is reportedly home to the ghost of its first keeper, John Paul Reddle Muller. He was known to keep a keg of beer on hand at his cottage to share with friends. Just north of the lighthouse was a blockhouse guarded by soldiers from Fort York. The soldiers would often row down from Blockhouse Bay to visit him, and legend has it that back in 1815 when three soldiers were visiting, John cut them off since he thought they already had enough to drink. A deadly brawl broke out and John mysteriously vanished. No one knew what happened to him and the story of his disappearance was passed down, and several 
decades later, the fourth lighthouse keeper, George Duran, found human remains buried beneath the ground near the lighthouse on Toronto Island. Now, today, visitors ascending the lighthouse have claimed to see ghostly shadows and felt the floor rumble beneath their feet. Number six. Mackenzie House. William Lyon Mackenzie was the first mayor of Toronto, and in 1837, he led a rebellion to overthrow British rule. Now, Mackenzie moved into the Bond Street home in 1859, and he died there in 1961. Mackenzie's wife, Isabel, died 12 years later, and in the 1950s, live in caretakers worked and lived at the Mackenzie House, and it was a story by Miss Edmund that eventually made newspaper headlines. Miss Edmund one night claimed that she was awoken by a soft touch on the shoulder. When she opened her eyes, Miss Edmund said there was a lady there bending over her, looking into her face, but a few seconds later, the lady vanished. Now, a few weeks later, Miss Edmund claims it happened again, but this time she said the lady drew back her hand and slapped her in the face before vanishing, as a source has said. Then, in the 1960s, a type of exorcism took place in the house, and it's recorded to air on television, which made the museum an even bigger draw for fans of supernatural phenomena. A woman's ghost has also been seen roaming the hallways, phantom footsteps have been heard and a basement printing press is said to start up all on its own. In 1960, this house was donated to the city of Toronto, and you can take tours of it today. Number 5. St. Michael's Hospital St. Michael's Hospital was established by the Sisters of St. Joseph in 1892, and one nun is still reportedly making her rounds to this day. The hospital is famous for tales of Sister Vincenza or Sister Vinny. Sister Vincenza worked at the hospital for 28 years as the nursing supervisor of Ostuptrix and died in 1958. Since 1965, visitors and staff have described encounters with Sister Vincenza, which often include her rearranging medication giving blankets to new mothers, and turning lights on and off. However, it turns out that Sister Vinny isn't alone in haunting this medical center. According to the hospital's records, there have been a ton of different ghostly experiences, many of which do not match the description of Sister Vinny. There's also said to be a spirit in the back filing room of the hospital's medical records office. Possessed elevators, rearranged medication, and flashing lights are other things that go on here. Number 4. Queen's Park The legislative building at Queen's Park has been operating since 1860, and the grounds on which it sits have been used since at least 1830. As one of the oldest urban parks in Canada, it's no surprise that the building is haunted. Now, Before the construction of the legislative complex, the University Hospital for the Insane was built on this property, dating back to 1842. Now, Today, there are multiple ghosts. The white lady wanders the halls, appearing with a long white flowing robe and long hair. Now, The maiden wears a checkered dress with an apron, which she holds over her face to conceal her features. And the most gruesome is the hanging woman who dangles from a hook in the long tunnel in the basement. Also, an apparition of a soldier in full regimental dress was spotted appearing angry as he descended the grand staircase of the main hall. Many visitors have reported sightings of a ghostly female figure, sometimes alone and sometimes in small groups of four. And one of them is known to be malevolent, and overall, it's just a spooky place. Number three, the Dawn Jail. The original building was completed in 1864 and was reopened in 2000. 2013 to serve as the administrative wing of the Bridgepoint Active Healthcare, a rehabilitation hospital located adjacent to the jail. Now, the jail originally had a capacity of 184 inmates and was separated into an east wing for the men and a west wing for the women. The jail is known for its overcrowding, inhumane living conditions, and public hangings. Abandoned Spaces reports that 60 people were hanged at the jail, and several were buried in unmarked graves on its grounds. The ghosts of the executed prisoners are said to roam the site to this day including that of a blonde woman who hanged herself in the woman's block. Number 2. The Elgin and Winter Garden Theatre Center Built in 1913, originally called Lowe's Young Street Theatre, the historic venue is not only home to two theatres, but also a few spirits. Now, the Elgin and Winter Garden Theatre Center, its most famous ghost is the Lavender Lady. While no one knows who she is, there's speculation that she could be a rival actress of a jealous castmate, or perhaps a jilted wife whose husband fell in love with a showgirl. When she makes her appearance, it is in the Grand Staircase and Elevator area. Areas. Those who have felt her presence notice a drop in temperature and the scent of lavender. She's also been known to call one of the 1930 manually operated cage elevators when she doesn't feel like taking the stairs. However, when the elevator door opens, the operator finds no one there except for a cool breeze and the fragrance of lavender flowers. Now, another ghost here is Sam. In 1989, after the building restoration was complete, three volunteers and staff 
off, heard a trombone or trumpet playing. Another odd occurrence was when the seats in the theater were flipping down and then back up. The volunteers used a Ouija board to conduct a seance at midnight on the stage of the theater, and the group communicated with a musician named Sam, and he said he was a trombone player in a 1918 vaudeville production at the Winter Garden. And coming in at number one is Casa Loma. Casa Loma is a gothic revival castle style mansion and garden that is now a historic house museum and landmark. It was constructed from 1911 to 1914 as a residence for financer Sir Henry Pellet. Now this place is absolutely beautiful, but there are some ghost stories surrounding this magnificent castle. The White Lady is someone who is believed to be a maid who worked here in the early 1900s, around the time when 60,000 people in Toronto died of influenza. She's been seen in a lot of places by guests or by cleaning or cafeteria staff as they've been cleaning up at the end of the day. Some have also reported sightings of Sir Henry Pellet and his wife Lady Mary Pellet. The tunnel leading to the castle's stables is another place where the most notorious ghost is believed to roam. Many have reported feeling as though they had been grabbed or had their hair pulled in the tunnel. People have also reported hearing the spirit in the tunnel sighing gruffly as he has even been captured in recordings, speaking and interacting with visitors. In one recording, he is heard mimicking a medium who said, oh, he's a horrible person while trying to make contact. Now, I've been here before and that tunnel is scary, so it doesn't surprise me that some ghosts lurk there. People also hear disembodied voices and feel touched by someone who's not there at all. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 haunted places in Toronto that are pure evil. Have you ever been to any of these spooky places? Like I said, I've been to some, but I think I want to go to all of them and see what it's like. Now let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm your host Emily, and we'll see you next time. Peace.